Hi, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to talk about the West Indies tour of England coming up um, in about three or four weeks' time. Um, first of all, thank you for watching. This is the about one year I've been doing these video previews, and I appreciate you watching. It's, uh, it's kind of cool to keep this going. Um, into the series, West Indies first. Um, I watched a very large amount of their series against Australia recently. I really like this West Indian team. Um, I think that they're one of the best teams that West Indies have trotted out there probably for about seven years. Probably since, certainly since at least Brian Lara's resignation, or sorry, retirement, um, at the end of 2006. Um, they're not star-studded by any stretch of the imagination, but they've got a serviceable bowling attack, and you haven't been able to say that about the West Indies for a good decade. Um, Roach, uh, Rampal and Sammy, and then some decent slow bowling options. Shillingford got ten wickets in the last game, I don't know if he's ultimately going to be the solution to that, but uh, certainly 10 wickets is impressive against a, a reasonable team, a team that's playing very well at the moment. Um, obviously, now Ryan's still in um, in the IPL, still contractual issues there, but potentially down the track, he's still very young. And Bishu, also a potential prospect. So lots of slow bowling options. Um, pace bowling is in a reasonable state. Roach had a great series against Australia. Um, the batting's obviously a concern, but Shandipal came back and, and did great in that series after having a pretty lean run. Um, Shivaraj Shandipal, between 2009 and 2011, so those three years, um, injury prone years for Shandipal, and, and you know, it's sort of been marginalised a little bit in the West Indian team. Obviously, Sarwan and Gao are no longer part of that team, and Shandipal was sort of falling in that category. Um, between 2009 and 2011, his averages were fine, still scoring centuries, but wasn't consistent at all, which is amazing for someone like Shivaraj Shandipal, who was built on consistency. Only scored in 26.3% of his innings uh, between 2009-2011. Um, likes England, which is a good start for the West Indies looking at this series. Average is 64.66 in England, um, has a 43.5% score percentage, which is extremely high, and uh, a good solid 7.7 .7 uh, century rate in England. So um, that's over 13 tests, I believe. So a pretty strong record for Shandipal in England. They're going to need him. Um, obviously, uh, West Indies have two main concerns. Uh, which we saw in the Australia series and in another series as well. First of which is really obvious, it's the top three, uh, the openers in particular, but hopefully Kirk Edwards will be back um, for this series. I think he's a better option than Kieran Powell at this stage of their careers, but at the same time it's much of a much in some in some ways. Um, but there were there were constantly three for double figures um, in that series, and frequently three for, three for 40, three for 50. Um, and you look at England's strength, new ball bowling, it's going to be a real concern. The second problem that they've got, and this is why they're going to need Paul and Bravo as well, obviously, but particularly Shandipal because we know he can do it, and Bravo's on his first tour to England, as are almost all these West Indians. Um, Shandipal will need to score some runs to keep them just even competitive uh, with the bat. Um, you know, the problem they've got, which is really it's had a lot, Ravi Ashwin's century, a lot of issues in every test, I think it was, in the Australia series, um, is those final wickets in the tail. And I think this is why they picked Fidel Edwards. I wouldn't pick Fidel Edwards in this team. I think Ravi Rampal has proven himself last year as a, as a really um, top-notch, well, not top-notch, but, but solid second option with the, with the new ball. Um, really good economy rate bowler, and we'll come to that in a second as well. Fidel, 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 sorry, Fidel Edwards, um, I think, is chosen for his ability to run through the tail, which hasn't happened. Edwards has taken 8 for 517 in his last five tests. That's 1.6 wickets a match at 64.63. And it's just never, his career's never taken off. Um, guy bods, he bowls very fast, he does move the ball in the air, it looks like the kind of guy that should have some success. <coughs> it looks like the kind of guy because it's hit stumps, and this is why I think they're choosing him, because they're worried about Rampal and Sammy in particular, uh, and whatever slow bowl they choose being too innocuous, so to speak, to really knock over, hit stumps, and just get rid of tail as quickly. Uh, Edwards has failed at that job, um, it hasn't worked, and I think he probably will play tests in this series, and I don't think he should. Uh, I think he will because people look at England, new ball, swinging ball, and this is going to be good for him, but it, it doesn't work. I think that they're doing themselves a disservice by looking to the past with someone like Fidel Edwards. Uh, Rampal, Sammy, Roach. Um, the one thing that West Indies do really, really well is, is economy rate bowling. And we saw that England had some problems with economy rate bowling against Pakistan. They just could not score. Feet were in the mud constantly. Run rates were two and below. And you look at someone like Rampal and Sammy, both excellent economy rate bowlers. So I think you've got to play with your strength. Particularly, I think Dionoran is a perfectly reasonable option as a fifth bowler as well. So, um, Fidel Woods, I hope, doesn't play. I think it would be tempting for them to play him because I think they'll look at the swinging ball and they'll look at those problems they have with tail enders and want someone really fast who can hit stumps, but I don't think Edwards is the guy. Um, England. England have obviously had a really rough tour of Asia, two tours of Asia. Um, rough, obviously, they lost four of the five tests, but also that every one of those tests was really competitive and close. 
and just emotionally I think it was a very trying series. And they come back to England, I mean they didn't destroy their reputation, but in all honesty, it's going to take a long time for them to get the same reputation back, because losing 3-0 to any team shouldn't happen, losing four tests in a row should never happen to a best side in the world. And um, <coughs> even if they did win in, in India when they go there late this year, I think those questions are going to hover over England for probably a few years. I don't think they're ever going to get back to that sort of, is, is this going to be one of the best teams ever thing? That's not going to, that's not going to be talked about for a while. Um, England have some problems of their own. Um, one is the new ball issue, in a sense. Mainly just fitness and who's going to actually bowl this thing. Um, we know that Stuart Broad had an injury issue in Sri Lanka. I don't know how serious that is and if he's going to play against the West Indies. Um, <coughs> Bresnan, Finn, Tremlett's had injury issues. Um, they're all good, but the question is who's going to actually come and play or are we going to have to go to even further deep in their bench stocks. The one guy you do know who will play is Jimmy Anderson. He's great. Um, in the last 12 home tests, Jimmy Anderson's taking 5.8 wickets a match, extremely high, at 21.37. He's explosive, he's dangerous. That matchup we talked about earlier, now the openers and the number three against Anderson, is, is a no contest, basically. West Indies will be three for 50 a lot in this series, there's no question about that. Um, so Anderson can carry this attack. 5.8 wickets a match suggests he can carry the attack. Swan was bowling really, really well on Sri Lanka, I was really impressed. And, um, and I think that's a really good sign for them too. There's enough bowling here, certainly, to deal with a pretty pretty bad batting card, even if Shanaful does monopolise an end, um, which I don't think he will, um, I must say. I think that that was sort of... Had, had a bit of shades of Dravid against England um, last last winter uh, when Dravid played really well. I think Shanaful, i uh, say his previous three years were were, averaging, were score, scoring at 26%, which is not good, especially for someone like Shanaful, who doesn't he's not going to hit a lot of boundaries. Um, so I, I, I think that England will get the better of that matchup. And I don't think he's a great player of slow bowling. I, look, I respect the 10,000 runs. The guy's awesome, had a great career. But I think if Swan is in full full flow, I think he will get the best of Shanaful down the order. The other question, it's a big question, and it's a really, really big question, actually, especially coming to the South Africa series, is Andrew Strauss. Uh, Andrew Strauss, averaging 27.61, scoring in 19% of his innings with no centuries in his last 21 innings. That's terrible. That's abysmal numbers. That's that's iffy numbers for a keeper, let alone an opening batsman. Um, it's 13 matches. It's two years' worth. Um, 25 innings since his last century. Um, going back to January 1st of 2010, which is now two and a half years ago, averaging 30.93, scoring in 24.3% of innings, and only one century in 41 innings. Andrew Strauss is probably not good enough to play to his career at this stage, to be frank. He's not young. He's about 34, 35. Um, obviously, he captains that team, but... You know the concern, the thing about oh well, the captains of the team blah blah blah. Well, you know they they're not winning matches. They weren't in Asia uh, against teams that weren't considered to be they're not not South Africa, which they're going to have to face soon. I don't think. Well, I think it's pretty obvious they're not going to drop Strauss. I think it should probably be considered if they're going to do it. They should do it now, not before the South Africa series, which is a massive battle royale series. Um, those numbers are really really bad, and Kemal Roach is bowling really really well. Um, so Strauss is in a lot of trouble. And I think, you know, we looked at, like, you look at the England problems they had in, in the slow bowling issues, um, particularly in Pakistan. Abdurrahman, really, really tight bowler. Ajmal, less so, but still fairly tight. Gul, quite a good economy rate bowler. Was well, he his throw against Sammy and Rampal and, and Shillingford, who bowled extremely economically, albeit on different pitches, uh, and on pitches that were very slow and non-conducive for scoring. But guys like Ian Bell and Kevin Peterson particularly struggled. I don't, it might well. It might not just be the slow bowling thing. It might be a matter of the fact they couldn't hit boundaries. Both those players like to hit boundaries. Now, again, you know, Strauss, Bell, and Peterson all struggle. Cook and Trotter very, very good, but leaves a lot for them to do, even with that long batting card. Um, yeah. So some questions for England. That said, they're going to win this series. Um, we'll see. It's not going to beat them. Um, the most amazing stat here is in the last 12 home tests, England are nine, have won one, have won nine, lost one, and drawn two. Um, since January 1st, 2008, England are 15, 4 and 6 draws at home against top 8 oppositions. Uh, the same notes for the West Indies, they haven't won a test in the last 12 away from home against relevant opposition. They're, they've lost 8 of those 12, 15 tests. Uh, they're 1, 29 and 12 in the last decade um, away from home against top, te top uh, 8 opposition. Now I think this is one of the best West Indian teams we've seen in the 10 years, but that's, they're horrific numbers and you can't pick anything but England 3-0 on the strength of them. Last time they were there, England lost. Oh, sorry, England won by 10 wickets and an innings and 83 runs. It's probably all it needs to be said. England will win this series 3-0, but there are still some interesting subplots to look at, particularly that Andrew Strauss thing. Thanks for watching.